in Psalm 23. As I was contemplating the, the day, uh, mother, mothers are for me heroes, uh, especially single mothers. They're my heroes. My mother was a, uh, you know, a single mother uh, trying to raise 10 children. It's a lot. All right, so uh, I was the last one, so I get to get all the problems. <laughs> so what you know, my younger siblings did, I, the one who suffered the most in the whole situation. But uh, God is good, and He used that for um, making me better. And, and so I'm blessed. And. Uh, so um, Psalm 23, uh, I'll you know, bring a message uh, on this um, morning, and we're going to be in this song probably for a few Sundays. The Lord put in my heart to um, bring uh, this song and then, you know, go little by little and then just enjoy it as we go along with Psalm 23. Let's all stand for the reading of the, uh, the Word of God this morning. Anyone visiting us for the first time? Anyone? We had a wonderful time uh, going so winning in the area. Uh, there were a lot of people saved, you know, this area yesterday. And uh, it's, it's a blessing to see the, the, the desire of the people of uh, hearing the Word of God. And we're expecting to have some visitors um, so we're praying for that too. All right, verse 1, please, uh, Psalm 23. Let's all read it, just one verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All right, we're going to um, stay there. And the message for this morning is resting on God's shoulders. Resting on God's shoulders. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for being the God that you are, being the wonderful God, the provider, the sustainer, the physician, the one that takes care of our needs, uh, even though uh, sometimes we don't even see it with our eyes, but we can perceive it and understand that it's you doing it. And thank you for loving us, and thank you for caring for us. I pray, Lord, that you bless uh, the message, uh, bless the day. We are celebrating Mother's Day. It's so special, Lord, I know for every um, dear lady who uh, was um, always providing and guiding her children. Uh, it's a wonderful um, way they do the, the calling and the privilege of being a mother. And so I pray that you be with them every minute and every uh, day, not only this day, but every day of their lives. I pray that you bless us as we learn from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Resting on God's shoulders. The phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make me think of the peril of the lost uh, sheep. And uh, I want you to turn to Luke 15. And we're going to see this picture because I think it's very important to see it from God's perspective. Uh, Luke chapter 15. We're going to go through uh, Psalm 23, you know, piece by piece, just taking and then delighting in His Word. Uh, but not, this is one portion of the day, and through a few Sundays perhaps, we're going to make a mini-series on this topic, resting on God's shoulder. Um, I see that the world, you know, is turning around and around and around, and um, you know, we as children of God um, see the devastation of sin 
darkness. There's a lot of, you know, um, animosity, wars, and great, you know, uh, evil expectations and all the stuff that is taking place with shooting, uh, you know, and my heart is heavy on that. So I want to bring um, angle from God's perspective. So within uh, the turmoil that we are living our lives, that we can understand that God is there for us. And uh, it doesn't matter what's, you know, what's happening to us or what situation will come our way. We need to understand and know for sure that God is there for us. And so that's why, you know, they're resting on God's shoulders. It's a wonderful thought. And I want to bring it to you as I, I initiate this topic in Luke 15. Notice uh, verse um, 4, please. Notice. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and ninety, uh, the ninety and nine, and the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it. Now notice, and when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders. I love this, rejoicing. Okay, notice that the sheep is being laid on his shoulders. And then the Lord is rejoicing. In this case, he's rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. So, um, obviously, when we take this metaphor in, in our lives, this uh, sheep, obviously, is you, is me. Yes. And his shoulders is God's shoulders. Amen. And I want you to uh, meditate on this thought. The shepherd is our Lord. Jesus is carrying us. Now notice what the Bible says, rejoicing for the salvation of our souls. So, as I preach to you on, that, on this subject, resting on God's shoulders, I want you to picture yourself as a sheep, uh, being carried on Jesus' shoulders every day. All right? So it's not just the one moment that you were saved, but literally we are on his shoulders. And we need to understand that so that we can rest on that thought. All right? And this is a truth from the Word of God, obviously. So, uh, let's look to Jesus as our pastor, what he does, okay? So I'm going to present to you, um, as, as uh, Luke 15, verse 4 says, notice, I want you to notice the value Jesus put on our souls. The value. Verse 4, notice. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Now notice the value that Jesus put or the Lord or God puts our, you know, on our souls. And so the value Jesus put on each soul it's 99 to 1. Think about that. 90, 90, 99 to 1. So I was thinking about the Lord is risking 99 souls to rescue you. Think about that. All right? And for every person saved, there are 99 souls left behind. See, we never thought about that, right? So you see, you are saved by God's grace. But the Lord left 99 behind so you can be saved. You see the value? That is a wonderful value. And that's what the Lord says in His Word. 
So if you're saved today, you know, if you're going to heaven, you know that for sure. All right? The Lord gave 99 souls and left behind to rescue you. Now, do you see the wonderful privilege that Christians have and the value Jesus gives for those that believe in him? He gives us, you know, uh, uh, this wonderful privilege because uh, we were immediately, you know, thinking about, yes, you know, I want, I don't know about your experience of salvation, but the moment that I was presented that question, if, you, if I die, you know, where should I go? I mean, I mean where would I go? And I didn't know, I wanted to know, that day, obviously, you know, that was the day that the Lord, you know, left behind 99 to choose one. And to make me understand that He is my Savior. Amen. And so that is a wonderful privilege. Now, let me say this, okay? Don't believe Satan and the voices that say you are nothing. That's right. All right? That you're nothing, that you are of no value. And that, you know, society, you know, see, the, the, the situation that we um, have in our society is that we have a paradigm that, you know, society creates, all right? And that, you know, you need to have certain status quo in order to, you know, make it in society. And we are always, you know, kind of like searching to accommodate ourselves, you know, to what the standards of the world you know, is, is pretending to give us. And so we forget that the standards of our life in, as Christians don't come from the world. And that the value that, you know, who we are, don't come, it doesn't come from the world. It comes from God. Amen. And this is what I want you to understand. So don't believe Satan and the voices that say you are nothing, that you are no value. Let me say this, that is toxic thinking. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't think that way. Because the value that God gives to us is wonderful and it's great. Mm -hmm. 99 to be, to be exact, yes. according to the Bible. So, um, uh, let me say the following. The worth of our souls is measured by God's love. Amen. The worth of our souls is measured by God's love. Uh, and so, First John, please, would you turn there? Notice what the Bible says. First John, chapter 4, in verse 9. Look at this verse 9. First John 4, verse 9. Notice. And this was manifested, the love of God, toward us. Notice. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. You see the value? Mm -hmm. And the worth of our soul is measured by God's love. Alright? And notice, and this was manifested, the love of God. How it was manifested toward us. That he sent his only begotten son. Yes, sir. And that's what he says. That's the value. So you see the worth. All right. And it's shown to us by love. <clears throat> Notice. This and this was manifested the love. How it was manifest, <laughs> manifested? The love of God to us. Because that God sent his only begotten son. In the world. That we might live. Through Him. He's the bridge. He's the one that makes happen our lives. So it's not the you know, it's not the world, it's Jesus Christ alone. And God love showing us, you know, the worth of our souls, how it is measured. And how it's measured is by um, his love. See, the worth of our souls is not measured, as I say, by the status quo of a person. All right, so make sure they don't fall into that trap in this society. All right, um, uh, nor uh, 
nor by material means. Your, you and I will not measure who we are by the status quo, by the material means that we might have, or the standard uh, value that people give to individual and society. So be careful to measure up to people. Don't do that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that <clears throat> we shouldn't do that. To judge one, you know, and measure our one to another, you know, and, and then compare. When you compare, then it's it's it's, it's bad because you know you and I cannot compare. You cannot compare, you know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, with one brother with another brother uh, situation is different. That's right. And, you know, the, our lives is different. Just like you know, our fingerprints are different in our hands from each other. We are different. Every one of us are unique. Amen. We were created uniquely. Yes, sir. And so we cannot compare, you know, one another. And so when, when you see someone, you know, thriving in, in, in material means in society, don't think that, oh, you know, I was behind, you know, these people, this person is ahead of me, and look what this person is amounting to, and then you kind of like feel like behind. Don't, don't do that. Don't measure up to people in material means, neither, you know, by their talents, or by the you know their uh, you know their status quo, please don't do that. God uniquely will provide to you what you need, and then you, as 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 a, as a child of God, absorb that from God, and then you know that God has a value put on you, and that's Jesus Christ's blood. Amen. 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 And he's you know his his death, his life given for you and for me, and that's how the Lord measure how much He loves us. So the worth of our soul is measured by His love. He, he, the Bible says that He loved us. So um, the worth of our person is set up by God's standards and not by the world. Remember that. So praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so I, in other words, I don't have to you know, um, measure you know, what all the peoples are doing or all the you know, individuals are accomplishing. I don't, you know, Praise the Lord. If you know, the Lord allows them you know, to accomplish you know, great things in life, that's wonderful. But the Lord will give you individually an opportunity for you to do it too. Alright? And so, just be aware that the worth of our souls is measured by God's love. And so, um, notice verse 10, please, in same, uh, 1 John. Notice verse 10. Hearing is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Alright, so, you know, love, obviously, you know, love is misunderstood. You know, I think love is one of the words that is misunderstood in life, in, in people's life. You know, we say, I love my dog, right? I love, you know, uh, you know, material things. I love my shoes. I love my, you know, my church. I love, you know, things. And, and then we, we pretend that, you know, we expressing the same thing when we say, I love my wife and I love my children. It's totally different. Yes, sir. It should be different, taken. But, you know, talking about the, the, the true love that God is giving us, which is the agape love. The perfect love, all right? You cannot compare it with, you know, I love the building, or I love my car, or I love, you know, what I eat, you know. It's, it's different. And so we need to understand that we need to treat it differently. So God loved, the way he loved us, is the perfect love. So hearing is love, that, that we love God, not that we love God, but that he loved us, past tense, and sent his son, that's how he measured his love to us. That he, you know, sacrificed, that he gives. And this is the perfect love without asking you anything. We always, you know, uh, think, uh, you know, I believe as, as humans, um, uh, we crave love. Yes. We desire that someone loves us. Right? Amen. Someone, you know, really care for you. I'm sure the children, you know, um, 
are expecting that you know parents love them, right? And you know wives they expect their you know uh, husband love them, you know, uh, and, and so forth, vice versa. I expect my wife to love me, but she expects also that I love her. That's right. But what kind of love? What are we gonna do with the love? What kind of love? This is just you know the the love that we express by words in every situation, or is the real love that is needed, or the one that we need to give, like God gave us, without asking us anything. By the way, you know, if you, there's a lot of Bible on this topic that God asks us to love the way He loves us. There's a lot of Bible on that. So, the worth of our souls is measured by His love. Now, and I believe that the way we need to love you know, others is the same way God loves us. That He measure all right, His love by you know, uh, measure the, the, the worth of our lives and our souls by His love. So that means the act of love that He provides to us, you know, secure us. And that's why we know that He's there for us, we know that He loves us, he, he, we know that He's there, you know, in any situation that you're going through, that He will be for you, uh, that we, He will provide whatever, you know, you need, and that secure, you know, our souls that we know where we're going to. Amen? Because of that wonderful love is fresh and then, you know, dedicated to us without asking us to do anything for Him. And He is, this is the one this is the way we love. We need to love, you know, one another. So the worth of our souls is measured by His love. Secondly, the measure of our faith in Christ is proved to us by His love. Okay, the measure of our faith in Christ is proved or proven to us by His love. So verse sixteen. Notice in the same chapter. The, the Bible says, and we have known and believed the love that God has, has, has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You see that? So the measure of our faith, notice, is it's, uh, based on you know, uh, what the Lord had done for us. Notice. The Bible says in verse 16, and we have known and believed. Amen. We have known, that's knowledge, okay? And believe, that, that means trust, all right? Or rely on, okay? The love that God has, has to us, all right? God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, in God, in him. Isn't that wonderful? So the measure of our faith, you see, is, is, um, uh, is the way that God is proving His love to us. Faith, you cannot trust God without He loving us. In other words, the way we trust God is because we know that He loves us, and then the least we can do is trust Him. Because He loves us. And because He loves us, then our love is, you know, uh, uh, and then the expectation that of His love makes us humble ourselves and submit to His Lordship. Amen. Yes, because of this wonderful love. And the love is proven, all right, that He, you know, went to the cross by dying with, you know, for us. He's proven yes, that He loves us. Amen? And because of that, then our faith, okay, uh, comes in and then we say Lord I trust you because you already showed me that you love me you see that and so this is the reason why a true Christian will decide to love God because he is convinced of God's love and then verse 19 the Bible says we love him because notice he first loved us alright so, you have learned to love because He already shown that. Mm, that's right. That's right. But you and I cannot love the way God loves unless we haven't 
you know, experience or taste the, the love of God. Nobody can love the way a Christian love because we know the, the love of God. And so, so, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know the Lord and they might pretend that they love but they cannot unless they taste the love of God first. Amen. They can pretend to love. But unless the person had the love of God, they would not be able to love. So we loved him. Okay, we loved him because he first loved us. So that experience, you know, uh, triggers us to continue understanding, trust, believe, and submit to God and to His Lordship. And so we know and we understand that He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our, you know, ourselves given to Him because of what He had done and shown to us. Did you know that God loved us first before His creation? Before His creation. Now, think about this and uh, ponder this in your heart. Uh, he loved me before he made the sun and the moon. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Before he made the sun and the moon, he loved me. And before he made the universe, he loved me. Think about that love. I was not even here. And he already loved me. He loved me before he made the oceans and the earth. He loved me before he made the animals and all the trees and flowers. <coughs> By the way, um, First Peter teaches about this truth. Notice in uh, First Peter 1:20. First Peter 1:20. Now notice what this uh, verse is. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And of course, um, this is, is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that when he was manifested, that means his love, his grace was manifested. Because Jesus Christ is the one who brought grace, not the law. Right? Grace. And that's the wonderful love manifested for, you know, it was um, uh, the, the Apostle Peter said, for ordained before the foundation of the world. So Jesus Christ for, you know, was ordained to come. All right? And so if he will come, he will come, okay, uh, uh, by his love. And with his love we conquered my soul. Amen. So the day that I, you know, made the decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I understood that his love, you know, his love was there for me. I did not deserve it, all right? I deserved to go to hell. But, you know, in spite of me, who I was, the Lord died. And the Lord died without asking me anything. And so that's where the love manifested, uh, where the love was manifested. Now, do you understand the value of your, of your person? Think about that. Do you understand the value of your person? Um, can you rest on the shoulders of this wonderful pastor, Jesus Christ? You see, the value means that the Lord is carrying you. And He's holding you right there. Because you are so valuable. I don't know what burdens you carry right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what problems you have. But you're very valuable for the Lord. Amen. And by the way, you are on His shoulders. And he's carrying you right now. <clears throat> you, as a child of God, you must know that. Do you understand the value of your person? And that is important to understand so that we, you know, can, you can respect yourself. 
Because if you if Jesus Christ gives you this value of 99 souls because of you, all right, then you should respect yourself. Amen. He's giving you that value. And that is something that we need to acknowledge. All right? So don't listen to voices that you know are saying you're nothing. That you, you know, you know, that you're nothing, really. That's Satan. And that's toxic thinking. So, can you trust on this wonderful provider and protector of your soul and of your life? This is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's sustaining us. I want you to um, go to Psalm 131. I want, I want you to see this wonderful picture. It's a beautiful picture of God taking care of us as, as His children. Psalm 131. It's a beautiful song from uh, Mighty Gates. Um, I listened to that Jewish fellow. He's a Christian. I notice verse, verse 1. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. It says, surely I have behaved, and notice this, I quieted myself. It's a child that is wind of his mother. My soul is even as a wind child. <coughs> now, Think, think about this wonderful, beautiful picture. Have you noticed when a child is hungry, it cries, right? Yes. Cries and cries and until the mother, you know, feeds him. Now, once the child is satisfied, then the child is quite down. Yes, sir. So, do you picture yourself being in the arms of God, taking care of you? Not just caring, but He's holding you. And then you should be satisfied. Amen. Right. You shouldn't be needing anything. Right. He's the one who satisfies the souls of men Amen. and every need that you and I might have. I love us. And as a child, quiet in the arms of God. It's a mother who feeds his child. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Amen. God is taking care of you. You and I should not be complaining of anything. Because if, if you're in the hands of God, if you're resting on God's shoulder, He's taking care of you. That means you shall not want anything. Because He takes care of you. But you must understand and learn and believe it. And then quiet down. He's taking care of you. The Lord is my shepherd. So it's a beautiful picture. He's really the guider of your life. Is God really the guide of your life? Are you resting on his shoulders or in his arms? Are you satisfied in God's arms like a child who was fed by his mother's breast? You know, or are you still complaining and crying? What is it that you're crying about? What is it that you're complaining? Are 
you satisfied or are you not satisfied? Because if you're not, you need to come to the Lord and embrace Him. He's there for you. He's there for me. And so, you know, what we do of God and understand the value that He puts on us, we can understand the depth of His love. How much He had loved us. So, stop complaining. Stop crying. Alright, quiet down. Just embrace him. And then love him. And he can understand the value that he puts on your soul. Um, to rest on God's shoulders and arms, you must understand the measure of his love. You understand that? To rest on God's shoulders and arms you must understand the measure of his love and the immensity of his care for you and for me. If you don't understand that, you don't understand the Bible. And you must understand that. What the Lord has done, what the Lord is doing right now, and continue doing in your life. So that you can rest quietly as he Moves. The Bible says, and there's a lot of Bible on this, be still and let the Lord be God in your life. Shall we pray?